Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. I'm Alicia, your host, and today's video is on simple American music history. I should probably scratch out the word simple because I realized way too late into making this video that doing a video on American music history is like doing a video on Western music history or European music history. It is so broad, there is so much to talk about, and it's impossible to cram it all into one video. So what I decided to do today with this video, this is like an overview video. And what I plan to do in the future is talk about some of these genres in more detail. And this video will be like kind of a hub for all the many musical branches that you can trace in American music history. So for example, we've already done a video on the blues, which we'll briefly talk about today. And we've also done a video on ragtime, which is mentioned really briefly in this video. But there are dozens upon dozens of genres that we talk about today that I want to address. Anyway, getting to be a long introduction, the plan today is to go over the roots of American music history and then we're going to talk about a few different genres. We're going to talk about pop and rock, we're going to talk about folk and country, and then classical. So let's get started. Where did American music begin? Well, obviously it began with Native Americans who were the original inhabitants of America. And then in the 1500s and beyond, when Europeans started coming over and invading, they brought with them their own musical styles that then blended, as well as the African American slaves who were brought over. Basically America, like Canada, which we've done a music history video on, is a gigantic melting pot for a whole bunch of different musical styles and different cultural varieties of music. There are a couple of genres that have really strongly influenced the development of American pop music especially, and that would be African American music and Appalachian folk music, and we're going to talk about each of those a little bit. African American slaves brought with them spirituals, which is a genre of music that is kind of what it sounds like, Christian music that is based on really passionate vocals and in a call and response style, which basically just means imitation. They've been popular in America since the 1700s, where they spread across the, the South and eventually became popular with white people in the 1800s. One particular style, um, aside from spirituals, that African Americans popularized in America are is a genre called the cakewalk, which is something that was really popular, especially in minstrel shows. And the cakewalk eventually led us to ragtime. And then we have Appalachian folk music, which is hillbilly music, a blend of American styles, black and white, and Irish and Scottish styles. It's from Appalachian folk music that you get honky tonk and bluegrass, basically the roots of country music. As far as Native American music goes, powwows have been consistently popular, um, but Native American music has tended to just stick to its own track. It hasn't been as influenced as other genres in like America's gigantic melting pot. We are going to talk about the very broad genre of pop music, which has its origins in the 1700s with William Billings. He kind of headed the whole traveling singer thing that's popular even today. And then we had in the 1800s, ballads and patriotic songs becoming common along with spirituals and cakewalks, which we've already discussed. In the early 20th century, we had Tin Pan Alley, which was a sheet music publishing house in New York City. This house distributed popular music to people far and wide, running parallel to pop music. Jazz and blues started flourishing in Memphis, Chicago, and New Orleans. Blues and jazz are the real roots of American pop music in the sense that they brought us the first stars in the same way that we think of pop stars nowadays. And this was in the advent of recorded music. For example, recorded music brought to popularity the Hawaiian steel guitar, which is popular in country music even today. So the progression worked by starting with blues and then jazz took over in popularity in the 1930s, mainly in the form of big band music at that time. And this, in the 1930s, you had swing music in full swing, you had Appalachian honky tonk going on, and then bluegrass and country were all kind of percolating. And that brings us to rock and roll and the 1940s, which basically started with Boogie Woogie, an offshoot of the blues. This music united teenagers and the rise of youth culture in the 1940s, and you saw stars like Frank Sinatra. And then of course we had Elvis in the 1950s, 
who was covering famous boogie woogie tunes as well as creating originals, him and others in his genre. We did a whole video on the blues, which I mentioned already, so definitely check that out if you want more depth there. In the 1960s, music started to become more political and lyrics started to become more mature and complex. Think of artists such as Bob Dylan to illustrate that. The 1960s were also the era of doo-wop, soul singers, progressive rock, psychedelic rock, which would then later evolve into funk and punk rock and so on. In the 1960s, America also saw the British invasion, which had artists like The Who and The Beatles explode in popularity. These British bands were blues based and then they started leaning into more of the psychedelic rock style. And then towards the end of the 1960s, the political leaning that music had had started to fade away. Running parallel to all of that in the 1960s was soul music, which was heralded by big voiced performers such as Aretha Franklin and Diana Ross. James Brown innovated the funk style at this time, which was influenced by psychedelic rock, but it was groovier and easier to dance to. These genres, soul and funk, would ride a big wave of popularity for about a decade before branching off into subgenres. Rock music began to splinter in the 1970s into a bunch of different genres, such as glam rock with guys like David Bowie, heavy metal with guys like Led Zeppelin, and then punk rock with guys like The Clash. In the 1970s, we also had disco music evolve from funk and the first hip hop music started to emerge as well. The origin of rapping is actually quite interesting because it combined two different elements. It combined DJing and also the introductions that DJs received. These introductions eventually became more and more elaborate until it was eventually rapping. And a brief mention to Latin music must be made, especially salsa, which was wildly popular in New York City in the 1970s. Latin music really started gaining steam in the United States in the 1950s, and this music was imported from Cuba and Mexico originally. We did see rumba as the first style in the 30s, and then calypso and mambo in the 40s, followed by cha-cha-cha, bolero, and charanga in the 50s, and then boogaloo, which I've never heard of, in the 60s. Latin styles then started mixing with jazz and that's where we got bossa nova. And that brings us to rock and roll in the 1980s with music further splitting, glam metal and punk rock continued to be popular. And then that's also where we saw alternative rock and more hardcore genres emerge. Hip hop also became more mainstream towards the end of the 1980s with artists such as LL Cool J becoming very popular. Defining albums were It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back and of course Straight Outta Compton. These albums were super controversial controversial because of their violent nature and R-rated lyrics. And that takes us to the 1990s where we saw grunge have a short day in the sun that pretty much died as soon as Kurt Cobain, Nirvana's frontman, died in the mid-1990s. When grunge faded away, that gave way to more mainstream and radio-friendly alternative rock. Hip-hop was also popular in the early 1990s with giants such as Notorious B.I.G. and Tupac, who were both murdered in the mid-1950s. A lot of musicians dying in the, did I say 1950s? I meant 1990s. Like alternative rock, rap and hip-hop became more mainstream after the mid-1990s. It was also around this time that singer-songwriters became popular again, kind of like in the 70s, such as Alanis Morissette. And then we also had ska-influenced punk bands like No Doubt, and Sublime. And that gave us the bubblegum pop groups of the early 2000s, like the Spice Girls, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, etc. This is where I'm going to stop our story because it's getting a little too close to where we are now. And this is a history video, so we'll leave it there. So that's rock and pop music. Now let's switch gears and start talking about country and folk music. And we'll start this by reapproaching Appalachian folk music, which we kind of mentioned at the beginning of this video. It started to hit the mainstream in the 1940s with groups like the Almanac Singers and the Weavers. And it was also around this time that swing music peaked in popularity with artists like Bob Wills. Country music as we know it today really evolved out of honky tonk though in the 1940s, especially when mixed with the blues, we get the genre rockabilly, which Elvis Presley obviously made quite famous. People like Elvis were also responding for bringing what was considered black music to white audiences. A lot of parents considered this music that their kids were listening to to be very scandalous, thinking they would be corrupted by this race music. And then in a different direction from rockabilly was the country pop music that was happening with guys like Hank Williams and then gals like Patsy Cline. Hank Williams and other of his ilk were the ones who really set Nashville as a main country music hub 
which it remains to this day. Gospel music also became popular in the 1950s, especially when it was mixed with R&B styles to make it more groovy and danceable. And then in the 1960s, soul music started separating from gospel in that the lyrics became secular as opposed to spiritual. Aretha Franklin was one really notable example who got her start in gospel music in the 1950s. In the 1960s, the Bakersfield sound emerged to rival the Nashville sound, and this was heralded, heralded by guys like Merle Haggard. Bluegrass at the time was also influencing rock music like The Grateful Dead. With the Bakersfield sound starting to dictate the course and direction of country music, that's when you had outlaw country emerge with artists such as Willie Nelson. Country rock bands like Leonard Skinner could also be qualified under the umbrella of outlaw country. Country rock eventually then led to heartland rock bands in the 70s and 80s, such as Bruce Springsteen. So we've talked about rock and pop, we've talked about Latin, blues, jazz, country, folk, all of those styles, but what about classical music? Well, classical music as we know it originates in Western Europe. So naturally, when people started immigrating to the United States from Western Europe, they brought their musical preferences with them. And this was especially pronounced around the early 20th century when globalization started to become a thing. In the 1700s, there were lots of composers who stuck to the European way of doing things, but you also had American composers who went completely in a different direction from any European influence, starting what was called the first New England school. This style of music was largely written by singers, and a lot of their music was written with really interesting harmonies, but totally doable for an amateur to be able to sing and perform. Anthony Philip Heinrich is one of these composers, and he was mainly self-taught in composition. Again, that is another very different thing from European music, is he had a lot of American self-taught musicians. In the mid to late 19th century, we had the second New England school emerge, such names because it was particularly popular in New England. In this school, there was a group of composers who were really driven to write and preserve American indigenous music, such as John Payne. John Payne had a variety of students whose names you'll probably recognize, such as Edward McDowell and Amy Beach. Now, the composers around this time studied music in Europe, but they were firmly American and based all of their teachings and performing practices in America. Classical music evolved even further in the 20th century with George Gershwin, who was really influenced by spirituals, and Leonard Bernstein, who was really influenced by jazz. These composers were known for blending classical music styles with more contemporary modern styles. Hey, Evan. Major composers like Stravinsky and Schoenberg, who weren't American natives, nonetheless had a really large impact on American music because they immigrated to the States and lived there for a large chunk of their careers. These composers in particular were really influential on classical music and brought us modernism in music. By the 1960s, minimalism became the classical music trend with guys like Philip Glass. This music featured lots of dramatic contrasts, as well as heavy use of synthesizers. Then we had the 1970s and 80s and John Cage and postmodern music. You might have heard of the composition 433. It's that famous piece that has absolutely no notes in it. The sheet music is completely blank. It's just silence for four minutes and 33 seconds because the audience and environment is the music. Honestly, orchestra in the early 20th century to the later 20th century just evolved into Broadway and movies. In early movies, you'll often hear overtures as the opening and closing credits music. And then of course in cartoons, you hear a lot of orchestral music. And all the way up until the 1990s and early 2000s, film scores were a huge deal as influenced by giants like John Williams who wrote probably every film score you've ever cared about. That has now since been replaced by electronic music and you really don't hear orchestral music in films anymore. Now I wasn't counting, but we probably covered three dozen different genres in this video alone. Again, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, it was purely an overview video. Just with this kind of video, we don't have time to get really in depth into the individual genres, but that is something that I wanna do over the course of the next several months. If you hear any high pitched squealing in the background, my baby's just having a, having a party, I guess. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what genres you think would be fun to explore in a future video. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And if there's like a really popular genre that you guys all care about, I'll definitely hop 
to that one for the next video. You can come hang out with me over on social media and Patreon if you'd like, and I'll catch you next time. Look at this one hair. It's like a tiny little baby hair. It's just floating in my face. It's really annoying. Well, classical, oh, I'm not recording. Crap.